beautiful morning a beautiful monday morning a lot of things actually happening today you know it rained today the weather is good it's a fresh new day it's a public holiday it's inauguration day mm -hmm. and it's also daybreak, daybreak day. <laughs> yes <laughs> yes indeed okay. thank you so much for joining us on daybreak this beautiful morning i'm dashan Husayna usman i am sunday michael Ogu. indeed it's a beautiful monday morning um, it encapsulates everything the nation is waiting uh, not um, anxiously but uh, waiting to witness what will be the seventh successive transition mm. in Nigeria's history uh, that beckons um, that would usher in the 16th uh, president um, democratic democratically elected president of the federal republic of nigeria yes indeed well there are lots of fireworks uh, last night and uh, we actually saw a lot of people you know coming in to uh, celebrate with the incoming president all the way from lagos you know flights booked you know hotels booked <laughs> and everything a lot of people would actually make so much money from <laughs> absolutely <laughs> a lot the, of businesses the city yeah. is, is, is bustling yeah it is um, but uh, you know it's it's bustling but it's quite quiet it's bustling for the visitors it's quiet for those who are here <laughs> okay. um bustling if um, you have something to do with the inauguration of course we all do but mm -hmm. in a in a different way mm -hmm. and um, so if you are coming to the city with all the paintings of uh, the curves everywhere looking new the flags change from the city center yeah. mm -hmm. and and all of that decoration that are going into place it feels like the place to be not just come visit and live after a couple of days so i mean uh, it has all the trappings of um, uh, where people do want to visit often yeah, and we definitely. hope that the city will continue like to tourist, make a new uh, not just and yes <laughs> we don't have to wait uh, for another swearing in before we begin to well, clean well, up the cities there's and make so it look. much so much expectations from the incoming government Absolutely. well we'll just keep our fingers crossed and uh, hope to see or wait to see what happens yes once and like over. the president said um, he doesn't um, look forward to any pity he asks for this job that, yeah so yes, and he's, he, been he's given, ready to do yeah, it the so. ball is now in his car exactly all right so let's take a look at the highlights at this hour Buhari signs bill excluding National Assembly workers from contributory pension. And Don prefers solution to insecurity terrorism in Nigeria. Nigerian nurse wins Florence Nightingale Medal for Exemplary Service. And now the details. President Muhammadu Buhari has assented to the National Assembly Service Pension Board bill and two others. The bill, which has become an act seek to exclude the National Assembly workers and others from mandatory contributory pension scheme. In a statement on Sunday signed by Senator Babajide Omo Wuriri, he said he was in furtherance of the provisions of Section 58 of the Constitution and the Act Authentication Act Cap A2 Laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 2004. He also passed into law the establishment of the Almajiri National Commission and the Federal Road Safety Commission Training Institute. The Act seeks to provide a multimodal system of education to tackle the menace of illiteracy, develop skills acquisition and entrepreneurship programs, and prevent youth poverty, delinquency, and destitution in Nigeria. The President also assented to the Federal Road Safety Commission Training Institution Establishment Bill for capacity building and training in road traffic administration and safety management and to provide training for members of the federal road safety corps all right let's take a look at the next one a university don and security consultant professor bola akin Terinwa, has maintained that the only way to overcome the insecurity and terrorism challenges confronting the country is to fight the menace without political religious or ethnic coloration professor akin Terinwa, a former director general of the nigerian institute of international affairs explained that the missing strategic approaches behind the spread of terrorism included the tendency of government to underestimate the strength of the terrorists, indulgence in self-deceit and strategic miscalculation, failure to involve youths in the fight against terrorism and the myopia of leaders in political security governance. The scholar urged the federal government to discourage religious bigotry, ethnic chauvinism and politi political economic uh, chishonry 
in order to uproot the domestic pillars of terrorism, stop the growth of terrorism and declare a total non-partisan war on the use of terror. He also said to Nigerians to do away with playing the cards of ethnic and religious prejudices for political purposes, urging them to throw the toga of selfishness and irrationalities into the garbage of history, calling on the government to formulate and implement policies and programs that will address the root cause of insecurity in the country. All right. Former health coordinator of Anambra branch of the Nigerian Red Cross Society, Chingwe Lawrence Uchenna, has been awarded the Florence Nightingale Medal. The award recognizes exceptional courage and devotion to victim of armed conflict or natural disaster. Lawrence Uchenna, now a registered nurse and senior staff nurse with the Royal Berkshire NHS Foundation Trust UK was awarded the medal alongside 36 other outstanding nurses from 22 countries. The award also recognizes exemplary service or pioneering spirit in the areas of public health or nursing education. The recipients were nominated by their respective National Red Cross or Red Crescent Society and selected by a commission comprising the International Committee of the Red Cross, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Society and the International Council of Nurses. Chingwe Lawrence Uchenna, who recently moved to the UK, was active during the COVID-19 outbreak within Anambra State, organizing training on WASH and psychological support in collaboration with the state. All right, with that, we'll uh, move on to more packages. Small-scale business owners in Bochi State appeal to the incoming uh, president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, to focus more on real issues affecting the common man for rapid economic growth. Now, they made the appeal ahead of May 29th, swearing in of the new government. Adamu Imam completes the story. Barely 48 hours to the beginning of new administration that will lead Nigerians in the next four years Small scale business owners are hoping to see rebels changes in the areas of economic transformation. Harisu and Adamu are entrepreneurs. They have been managing their small businesses for several years and hoping that the government policies will enhance their operations. The new government should do the needful by creating more jobs through industries so that we can be employed and leave this stress of moving from end to end under the sun. I want the new president to revive railway transportation in Nigeria, especially in the Northeast. The masses will have some relief. I remember listening to the BBC and heard somebody say that the price of loading goods to Nigeria from China is less than taking them from Lagos to Kano. So if they can focus on rails, it will favor us a lot. Umar Ahmed, an artisan with special needs, advised Tunubu to look at the implementation of the 5% idea promised them by the outgoing administration. Recently, President Buhari assented to the bill for disabled persons. That bill will address some of our challenges through the 5% we were promised, but yet to be implemented. I appeal to the president-elect, Bola Tunubu, to address it because those of us with special needs don't know where the problem is. We need fertilizer at affordable prices and in good time. Usually the product does not get to the real people that go to farm. However, we pray for them to have mercy on us and not to take us back to that era. Let whatever belongs to us masses be given directly to us so that we can feel the impact of our government. With many believe that bad leadership is responsible for the Nigerians' economic doldrum, these business owners are hoping that the next administration will provide an enabling environment for small businesses to thrive. Adami Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. And now moving on to Kaduna, the outgoing governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasser Erufai, has said the incoming administration in the state is lucky to have a working document to guide its operation on the first day of office. The governor stated this during the handing over of a copy of the report of the transition committee to the governor-elect Ubasani at the council chamber of the Sarkashim Ibrahim House in Kaduna. Ahead of the May 29 inauguration, Governor Nasser Erufai said the governor-elect Obasani can hit the ground running from day one. 
The governor said he was not fortunate to have such document when he assumed office in 2015. First is to thank the Transition Committee for the hard work and dedication that enabled them to produce this report before the date of handover to the next administration. We were not so fortunate when we came in 2015 because briefings only started after we took office on the 29th of May 2015. Then our transition committee had all the materials and the documents to prepare a report. The governor-elect Obasani commended members of the transition committee and promised to deliver on all his campaign promises. I have no doubt in my mind they have done a very good job. I will try to study their recommendation and by the grace of God we will try as much as possible to implement most of their recommendations. I'm, I can say here that I'm a very lucky person because uh, I'm being given all the support by my boss who have made sure that uh, the people we put together are people that can really help my own administration. The chairman of the transition committee Balara Balawa said members of the committee exhibited transparency in their assignment and engaged extensively in the area of agriculture, environment, natural resources, human capital, institutional development, and security. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. All right, from Gusau, the Zamfara State Capital, the outgoing Zamfara State Governor Bill Matawale has handed over the Transition Committee report to the Governor-elect Dauda Lowaldere. Now speaking during the handover of the documents of government at Government House Gusau, Matawale, who was represented by his deputy, Senator Hassan Nasiha, said the documents were compiled by the Transition Committee set up to ensure smooth handing and taking over of government in the state. Governor Bello Matawali, represented by his deputy, while handing over the Transition Committee report to the Governor-elect, said the documents contained activities of the administration from year 2019 to year 2023, which will serve as guard to the incoming administration in the state. Governor Matawali also seized the opportunity and called on the Governor-elect to caution his supporters to be law-abiding and ensure peace during and after the inauguration ceremony on the 29th of May. He stressed the need for people to know that Zamfara State belongs to all, hoping that what happened during the governorship election results declaration will not repeat itself after the handover of government to the incoming administration. This, um, this state is our state. Zamfara State is our state. We can never run away from it. Yeah. Last time, a lot has happened by the time when it was announced that you are the one that won the race. A lot of instructions has been made throughout the state, especially people are better. People that are not in other part. Please, I would like to use this opportunity to please kindly commit to you and to other members of the other party to let them take this state as a brotherhood state. We are one and we don't have any place to go and to stay in the state. Responding, the governor-elect Delta Lowell described the handing over as historic that remain indelible on his mind. The current governor of Zamfara State is handing over the transition committee report to the incoming administration, alhamdulillah. I've heard clearly uh, from the deputy governor about some of the few remarks he made, one in terms of power being transcend. Alhamdulillah, he is a very good reminder for all of us. And uh, I can assure you, I'm fully aware and uh, I'll do whatever it takes, inshallah, to keep reminding myself about this. The Zamfara State Governor-elect Lowell also said his administration will study transition document and if there are concerns on issues, he will approach the outgoing administration for explanations. 
All right, and moving on to the North Central, the outgoing governor of Benue State, Samuel Otom, on Friday, May 26, signed a bill into law which provides for the maintenance of former governors and their deputies. However, the actions of the governor did not go well with some Benue people who have continued to ask questions. Jimmy Azende has the details. The law provides for monthly pension, personal aids, vehicles, and foreign trees, among other provisions. The Benue people who have termed the law bogus are wondering why it is coming from a state executive who had poor records of payment of salaries. But on the second thought, did he really deserve it? If you have performed well, in court, you deserve some packages, even if it means pensions or other packages as assigned to that. But on this very note, I beg to disagree with that. Because the same person that is looking for packages after office, like retirement and pensions and the rest, have never, didn't even care the price of the welfare of the ex or the, or the, or the, the, or the pensioners who have served the state for so many years. Many of the residents are asking where such funds will come from, with many a huge debt and remuneration crisis. The bill will have passed immediately after the first tenure of the immediate going out government. But now the state is cut up. The state is not with credit. We don't know how they can do to pay up the pensioner and the civil servant workers. The state now is much with credit. The homes. But the past the incumbent passing governor. I don't know where they can from. I had the phone to pay the pensioner and the civil servant before reaching the governor. The residents are also worried with last minute appointments by the governor into the state civil service. The outgoing governor made us understand that Benio has no money. There's no money to even, even make some uh, infrastructures. There's no, nothing, no appointment were given. Nothing even happened in this state. This state has been so down, forgotten. So for now, for a sitting governor to come and make so many appointments, over 10,000 new appointments in a tenure of less than two, two weeks, I think it's surprising. But though we don't know the intention, but I think if you want to benefit from anything, you, you're supposed to be a, pro, a, pro, a product of that. You're supposed to put those avenues on ground so that when you go, you can benefit from them. But it is still to be seen if the law will stay or not. The next assembly will make that decision after it resumes in June 2023. At the moment, there are indications that groups and individuals are making moves to protest against the law in the state. All right, so you're still tuned to Daybreak on Trust TV, and I will take a break. When we come back, the show continues.
somewhere you find that they must look at the same Not necessarily uh, tribal or regional. All right, welcome back and thank you for staying with us. It's now time for the newspaper review. We'll take a look at the stories on the front pages of the national dailies. And, uh, you know, uh, today being inauguration day, it seems most of the newspapers are actually carrying the same story. But we'll begin with a daily trust newspaper. Uh, world leaders... Others attend Tinubu's inauguration today. Uh, the kingmaker takes over the throne. Don't pity me. I asked for the job, says incoming president. Cautious, uh, cautious optimism in real estate as new administration takes over. And we'll take a few more stories from... Uh, from uh, Daily Trust newspaper. On page three, we have subscribers transactions under threat as 120 billion Naira USSD debts tears telcos and banks apart. We also have uh, Buhari confers national honors on Anyoku Tinubu's wife, Emefiele, 337 others. A writer here that says Akonde Oshoba ministers aids Davido Osimen make list. Uh, we'll take one more and then move on to the next paper. Buhari orders return of Obalende Eid ground to Lagos Muslims and also to die as explosion rocks Kefi. These are some of the stories on Daily Trust newspaper. All right, most of the stories, like um, Usain have said, uh, dwelling on the inaugurations and not too many of them on the front pages. And so to the Daily Sun, we have basically just two stories. A new era as Tinubu governors take oath of office. Uh, the details of that story you'll find on page 16. When agitators, agitators hijack radio stations in Ibadan, attack police station in Lagos. National carrier jetliner flew in as Nigeria Air returned with passenger as Ethiopian airline sources. It, it's a grand deceit. Uh, this is according to the airline operators of nigeria and that's it on the daily sun this morning all right let's take a look at the nigerian tribune uh we'll start from the top of the page there police arrest seven in ibadan lagos as yoruba nation agitators attack radio police stations akintoye disowns perpetrators now autumn hands over 187 billion naira debt to successor we have the lead story here that says Tinubu takes oath of office today, his road to presidency. And writers here that say Abuja Agog all set for his inauguration. Eagle Square takes shape. Security forces cordon off three armed zone. Governors elect set for inauguration in 28 states. World leaders arrive. And uh, on the footnotes there, we have Buhari orders military uh, to surrender Obalande aid ground. And uh, Olubada Anyaku conferred national honors. Buhari discriminated against South South, says Clark. And these are some of the stories on Tribune. All right, to the Punch newspaper. Tinibu takes oaths as president. Nigerians demand quick action. Private sector demands blueprint on economy, fuel, subsidy. And don't pity me. I ask for the job. I won't give excuses. President elect. And Tinibu worked hard to be elected president, says Buhari. And to other stories, African presidents, U.S., Canadian delegations arrive for inauguration. You'll find the details of that story on page two. And that's it on the punch. All that's right, fine. on Daily Independent, we have. 80.7 trillion Naira debt subsidy drain may wobble Tinubu's presidency. Uh, we also have uh, crisis brews in Cross River over Kali aircraft. Kali Air aircraft. Now we also have uh, Buhari insists Nigeria now better off than in 2015. And these are some of the stories on Daily Independent. All right, to the blueprint, which is not any different. It um, starts there with a front page comment. The dawn of Tinibu's presidency. As Tinibu takes over government today, as part of a recipe for Nigeria's 77 trillion debt, rising inflation, employs stringent fiscal and monetary policy. However, 
and stop borrowing, seek debt relief. That's according to Owo. And Tilibu government will offer a new lease of life. Afedi Fere. Buhari's exit grieves over Chibok gas and others still in captivity. MTN Etel leads as active internet subscription hit 157.5 million in Q1 uh, 2023. And Benway Alia inherits 187 billion debts from autumn. And uh, 10th National Assembly for inauguration June 13th. Lawan declares, my family doesn't need Nigeria's wealth to survive. And that's coming from the First Lady in the waiting, Remy Tinibu. And that's it on the Blueprint newspaper. Up next is the Nation newspaper, World Leaders for Tinubu's inauguration. 18 new 10 second term governors take oath. Uh, and uh, these, this is actually one of uh, many more stories on the Nation. All right. Um, uh, moving on to, I think, the Tribune. Got uh, Okay. We'll move on to the Guardian newspaper now. Um, okay. Cautious optimism as Tinibu offers hope to weary Nigerians. Uh, you have there uh, the outgoing president, um, you know, stepping into the Air Force One, or the Eagle One, as it's known um, in Nigeria. Eight years, eight performance indicators. Uh, the Guardian there is trying to show um, of various sectors and how this government um, has fed. You want the details of that, you pick up today's um, Blue Dream news, uh, The Guardian newspaper. Moving on to other stories on the front page. Buhari's tenure ends, but not his rare economic footprint. Operators fault Nigeria's air launch without AOC registration number. I apologize for my difficult choices that cost pains. Buhari tells Nigeria. you find that on page 6. And that's it on The Guardian for this day. All right, let's take a look at First News newspaper. I apologize for pains my policies cost Nigerians. Buhari says, I'm leaving Nigeria better than I met in 2015. We also have my family uh, doesn't need wealth to survive. No, Nigeria's wealth to survive. That's Remy Tinubu. Uh, we also have Tinubu's inauguration will strengthen me, says Peter Obi. The lead story here talks about, uh, it's an exclusive. EFCC places outgoing governors on the close watch, Matawale, Yahaya Bello, Tambuel, Wike, Autumn, top list as anti-graft agency deploys eagle-eyed operatives across states. U.S. delegation, African leaders arrive at Abuja ahead of Tinubu's inauguration. Now, Buhari has set traps for Tinubu, Sheh Husani alleges. We also have... Um, Declare your assets, investments, Sarap tells Tinubu. And my worst experiences under Buhari, says Garbashihu. These are some of the stories on First News newspaper. I wonder what those worst experiences will be. <laughs> um, moving on to the Vanguard newspaper. Buhari apologizes as Tinubu takes oaths of office today. Uh, I am sorry for my difficult choices that cost pains sufferings says he is leaving nigeria better than he met it in 2015 terrorists bandit terrorized nigerians under buhari catholic bishops commend him on infrastructure approval of lux mundi varsity the second niger bridge tinibu's administration will have loads of labor challenge ajeru and don't be in a hurry to remove fuel subsidy nupeng cancers tinibu and Buhari is Nigeria's worst leader, Clark. Why Tilibu must restructure Nigeria now as YCE. A Nigeria Air Group, Nigeria Air Group drags Sirica to EFCC. You have two pictures there. One, the pre-inauguration church service. And there you'll find in the front row, uh, the vice president, uh, then his wife, uh, the wife of the president-elect and former president, Yakubu Gawan, uh, flanked by his wife yesterday at the National Economic Center. Um, the other picture, of course, has um, the president-elect Ahmed Bola, Bola Ahmed Tinibu, uh, the outgoing president, Muhammad Buhari, the central bank governor, Godwin Emefele, and the chairman of Boa Group, Abdul Samad Rabiu. Uh, to other stories, Yoruba Nation agitators invade radio station in Ibadan, storm Lagos Police Division. 
and Cortes beheld youth leader kill seven others over palm trees in Cross River. And um, he and and Didi relegated. He will be survives. And that's coming from the premiership. And that's it on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper. All right, let's take a look at the Nigerian News Direct uh, from the top of the page there. NAS leadership. I deserve Tinubu APC's support for Senate presidency, says Osita Izunaso. And uh, we also have Abiodun's reemergence as Ogun governor is an act of God, says Debasco. All right, we also have how Nigeria loses over 104 billion naira annually to imported energy drinks. And uh, the lead story here talks about the inauguration. Stakeholders project tough challenges uh, as Buhari hands over to Tinubu, apologizes over rigid policy choices. Buhari has set up traps for Tinubu, says Sheh Hosani. Uh, I feel fulfilled leaving Nigeria better than 2015, says Buhari. Says Nigerians have chosen well as he bows out and laments negative indices. Now, 11 PLC shareholders uh, receive bumper returns on investment amid challenging, challenging business environment. And we also have on zero carbon emission, Dongote Cement Ibese commissions trucks for biomass waste management. These are some of the stories on Nigerian News Direct. All right, that's, um, that's it on the papers we have for you. This morning, we would now take a deep dive into what some of the papers have on their front pages. And joining us as usual this morning is a public affairs analyst uh, to help us provide perspective, Dr. Larry Uluani. It's a pleasure to have you join us in the studio this morning. Thank you very morning. much. Thank You're looking you like the next president. <laughs> I mean, the president <laughs> like. <laughs> Maybe we just, just look for a placard and just hand the contract. Like just, where you look. We are just facilitating with the yes, with the we, Nigerian mm, people. Absolutely, and you are Nigerian. Dog. You are Nigerian also. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, before we go into the papers this morning, you look radiant on the outside, but what what? How do you feel on the inside? Um, does it feel like a new dawn? Uh, what are your prospects for this government? Uh, yes. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Good morning, Nigerians. And uh, it's a new dawn. Whether you like it or we don't like it, there must be a transition because that is constitutional provision. And the governance is continuing. If Buhari finish, because another person must come. If another person finish, another person. So <clears throat> we don't have cause to lament than to pray and set agenda for the new administration. So whether we, some of us will say the country is somehow, which we all agree to some extent, because uh, with what President Mohamed Bari has done to me, I will be very fair to him. I can't write him up outrightly. That's the truth. I can't just tell you that uh, Bari is a failure. Like, the ways of people who say it. So, do, do you that. agree with his uh, perspective that he's leaving the country better than he left him? Uh, yes, that is where, yeah, yeah, I think I can hear that. <laughs> but uh, the issue there is that if we have to go on that, it will take us nothing less than one hour to break those things down. But the issue there is that uh, in some areas, let's put it that way, in some sectors, like infrastructure, like infrastructure, he did well, absolutely, fantastically did, did well. Are but in saying? the area of security as well, we must be sincere to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Though we have not gotten to where we are supposed to be in security, but we have a one kind of short memory in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Before he took uh, out of office in 2015, we all remember Boko Haram flag was uh, is at uh, about three local government in Bono. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can remember that election, we could not conduct election in about three or four local government. Even about uh, a month to election, mm -hmm. Governor President Jonathan asked to postpone the election for another extra six weeks so that they can bring some foreign uh, fighter to displace uh, Boko Haram to some extent. So today, we are not hearing about Boko Haram again. Mm -hmm. We are not hearing of bomb blasts in Yanya today. Uh, but bomb blasts at the United Nations yeah, building. The argument has always been, it, it doesn't matter whether the bomb blast is happening in Yanya or not. The, 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 the truth is, 
we appear to have lost more people to insurgency, whether you call it kidnapping or, or banditry. Or banditry. Uh, so, in a way, insecurity has festered. Is it enough to say, okay, I defeated Boko Haram, but uh, something uh, yeah, you know, you know, security is uh, is ongoing things. Mm. We must realize that there is not any government. Immediately, you are curbing one area, or you are stopping one area. These people find another area. Have we ever heard something like banditry before mm -hmm. in our country? Nothing like that. But all of a sudden, we find ourselves having a banditry. And people begin to now go to dictionary to begin to get what is the meaning of all these and how are we going to tackle it? I'm not saying I can't give him 100% there. Because no matter how it is, if we are losing lives of people and we are having people in captivity, is not a good but some would also argue that you know uh, the banditry and terrorism became worse during his tenure for now we don't have more of terrorism we have more of agitators and banditry he has able to deal with terrorism to some extent through the help of buying and at the same time this is where i'm also going at the same time we could not able to get our military uh personnel enough equipment in the last 15 20 years so when he came on board with the relationship we have with america because which president jonathan could not have that relationship with america they could not sell arms to him and he could not buy arms by proxy either by russia from russia or whatever but the president Obama, everybody, he has that relationship with donald trump and is able to buy a lot of ammunitions a lot of like super tucano a lot of uh, nav jet nav this you know all those stuff yeah. so that is yeah because it's part of our problem because at the beginning, you are aware that at the beginning of uh, terrorism, the army were leaving, uh, they were dropping their guns and they are leaving the country and they are running away. They said there is no enough ammunition for them to fight these people. And what these people have is even more than what they have. But today, reverse okay. is a story. So uh, I would like you to share your thoughts on what uh, Sheh Hussani said, you know, saying that Buhari actually set a trap, uh, has set a trap for Tinubu. Uh, would like you to share your thoughts. I think uh, he's talking about uh, a lot, but I'll just touch on the, you know, debt profile of Nigeria and what it means. For you them. know, uh, Senator Sheh Hussani, you know, is a, is a one uh, lone ranger. He's a former, he's a one former, he's a former senator, and he's a lone ranger that is always speaks his mind the way he sees it. Even when he was uh, at the National Assembly, he will all recollect how he always tackled President Muhammadu Buhari. He said, "No, don't be deceived, Mr. President. The people that are around you are not telling you the truth." So he's a, he's a very, he's a one known voice that he speaks his mind. We must respect that, and uh, he's saying his own on his own perspective. And I believe, so far so good, I don't believe he's an economist. Yes, I don't think he's an economist by profession. So you can only be looking at the way the debt is being acquired and just turning that you know, this is a trap for new administration. Uh, we can say if I support that line, it's like I'm believing in what he said. Are you saying that the debt is not a problem? Is The debt is not a trap. Don't let it, the trap. Is it not a trap? Is a war? Is a is a is a political undertone? Yes. When you say somebody, another administration set a trap for somebody. That means you want the next administration to fail. Well, like, um, uh, or the, uh, from what I read, he said that uh, Buhari is trying to make his own administration more yeah, better than your, your, the, the action of this government, whether deliberately or otherwise has resulted in some quagmire for the incoming president. Uh, the question would be, we are already saying we are servicing debt with 112% of our revenue. That means all the money we got plus extra 12% goes into repaying what we have already borrowed. And whatever we are getting is not even enough to meet. Uh, the, is that not something that would worry? Uh, yes, there is, there, is, there is always a problem. We must come to, we must come to that point that if there is no problem, we don't need leadership. Just to add to what he said, we also mm. have state governors, you know, handing over exactly. huge, huge billions yeah. of naira yeah. debts to a lot. Your uh, let's be realistic to ourselves. Uh, I've said it time with that number here. I don't have a problem in borrowing, mm. but I have a problem in what do you use the money for? 
is what you use the money for is this something that we can see for in the next 50 years that our grandchildren can be proud of so that when we are even servicing the debt we are not servicing the debt and regretting so if they borrow money what that we we need to debt management office is managing all those things and i believe that if they have crossed their boundary if they cannot service the loan they will not give them approval from the imf all right um by the way the debts can come from various sources yeah. uh, if the imf says no they can go for euro bond yeah so um so Moving away from the outgoing president, in a matter of um, hours, he will be history. We will start yeah. referring to him as former exactly. president. To the new incoming administration, he said something that struck me. Uh, he's urging people not to pity him. He applied for the job. When he said that, and uh, when you read it, how did you feel? What what message did that kind kind of message? Uh, I think uh, he's trying to shift our mindset that we must get it right. Governance is about service. Governor is about responsibility. Governor is not to come on newspaper or come on TV and begin to say, oh, how is he going to do it? How is he not to concern you with that? That is why we elected him. So we must encourage him that you must get this solved. That is what he's saying. Don't pity me. I requested for the job. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very powerful statement and it's a, it shows a leader. It shows a courage. Yes, you don't just sit down as a leader and you expect people to be pampering you at the bar. Ah, uh, how are you not going to do it? Like when this uh, President Memory Admission came in and they begin to say, Ah, uh, it's not our fault. We met. Uh, <laughs> 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 we met. <also. laughs> okay. Everybody were tired at that. Uh, why do we not elect you? Are you getting it? Why do we elect you? Uh, it was the PDP administration for uh, 16 years. Yes. They do nothing. But if this is your four years. So we, I think the Nigerian citizen, we need to come to a, a responsibility because if President-elect uh, Chinobu is also going either in the next four years or in the next eight years, he too will leave a faculty of another challenges, of another problem. So another administration coming, we also tackle something. Mm -hmm. So that is how it's going to be. If there is no problem, there won't be a campaign. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing in America, the same thing in Europe. When the when the UK have issue, you can see how they change prime minister within three months mm. because there is a problem. All right, let's take a look at uh, first news newspaper exclusive where EFCC has actually placed outgoing governors on the close watch, and you know mm. uh, a lot of uh, governors have actually topped the list like Yahya Bello, Matawele, and Wiki, and also Autumn and others. Uh, what do you foresee? Do you foresee? Uh, arrests uh, in the future. Uh, at number one, I believe they made a mistake there. Ayabeli is not going now. Ayabeli still have about almost six months to use in, his, mm -hmm. <laughs> in the office. <laughs> so Ayabeli is not going to be part of their... Uh, so, but uh, to be sincere to ourselves, it's not even about arrest. They have, they have arrested former leaders in the past. What come out, out of the process? The judicial process. Did they have enough evidence? Did they do their homework very well? This one that you say you want to arrest, if you arrest, show them on media, everybody will not be jumping. Hey, they have arrested him. Can't you see? No, we have left those jamboree period. If you have enough evidence, and let that be, let them set a, a, a special court. I believe this new administration will begin to work on it. Let them set up a special court whereby they will undo all these. Uh, our former governor, former this case within two years. But some of them are being caught now. Where is uh, the former governor of Ikiti State? Fayoshi. Since how many years now? Four, five, six years he had left government. He went to yes, yes, to detain him. After that, you'll be hearing, I want to go for a medical trip. I'm not feeling well. I want to do other stuff. There are a lot of lacunas in our constitution that they are taking advantage of. So they should not just raise our emotions and all these things. Me, I don't raise emotion on it because what's important is do your proper investigation, get these people arrested if you want to get them arrested, and let them be prosecuted. Within two space of two years, let them recover some of the money back to the state. If even the present governor in the state will not lose the same money again. All right. Um, you <laughs> create a sense of um, a quagmire there. We hope someday.
Yeah. Uh, they were able to go past it. Another interesting drama ahead of this inauguration uh, took place on Friday. Nigeria Air. The minister said it will land. It landed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, see, <laughs> you see all this story? You see all this story? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. I'm just trying to be very careful with all this story. <laughs> you know, there are all manners of different perspective towards it. Mm -hmm. uh, the man have been promising us that before the handover, they will launch Nigeria here. Yeah? Glory be to God. We have seen one private jet written Nigeria here on it, <laughs> whether by whether by means or by by proxy. But uh, this is part of what I'm saying. ESC should not put his touchlight on ex governor alone. Mm. What about ex minister? Mm. Are you getting it? Mm. So what has been happening for the last four years or seven years they have been promising us this and one day to go, you say you have you have so now new administration will now come in and check it. Is he going to fly? But if it I will ride for eh? But it landed. It just landed and took off again. And took off again. Just it doesn't take passenger air. to anywhere. Yes, it took off at his, as Ethiopia. Uh, to, took Ethiopia passenger. It took Ethiopia to passenger to Ethiopia. Uh, glory be to God. We hope for good thing. That's mm -hmm. as a Nigerian citizen. But how we are you positive. describe what has happened in Nigeria? Uh, does it appear like a scam? Uh, you know that is the, that is the area you are trying to drag me to. Me, I'm on a live TV. I will not say it's a scam. But the only area I just appreciate President Muhammadu Buhari is that all the former staff of Nigeria Airways, they were all set to pay their pension, pay their own salary. Are you getting it? Because when they scrapped Nigeria Airways, a lot of them, you know, they could not pay them, they could not pay anything. I think that is the only thing. That is the only good thing about the fertilizing in Nigeria here with in terms of logistics, in terms of carriage, it's got of everything now, plane, aircraft, whatever. I don't want to even delve into because these ones are if the minister of aviation there cannot give you if you interview him today, he will just be telling you we are still working with other airline, we are still trying to work with other country to lie us together. At the end of it they are able to get one. But the only joyful thing I've just seen is that they are able to pay the layoff workers. Salary and their allowances and their pensions that they have owed them for many years. That's the only thing interesting about what they did. After that, is this new administration that will now begin to check it and begin to say, is he going to fly? If he's not going to fly, please scrap this thing. All right. Let's uh, move on to something a little bit uh, lighter than politics and all that. Now, uh, we actually have two crime stories here on Vanguard. One talks about agitators, that's Yoruba agitators, uh, invade radio station in Ibadan and also storm Lagos police station. And we also have cultists behead youth leader and kill seven others over palm trees in Cross River State. Yeah, it's, the, it's, the, it's the, you know, we are still having all, the, all these agitators have been there, uh, the Biafra and the Yoruba nations. And I think what they are trying to do is to just let the new admission, incoming admission, know that they, they are still assist. But I believe their leader, the son there, uh, Professor Banja Akitoye, <coughs> he said he's not aware of it and it's not part of it. So let us just believe those ones are just a, maybe, I won't call them uh, miscreant, but I can just call them, they are just to disturb our society. Well, on the Cross River one, it's also a sad story, fighting, killing themselves. So I believe the pantry is giving them a lot of money. <laughs> 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 All right, well, still, still maybe, talking maybe about the crime. It pan crude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, I believe it's giving them a lot of money before they can do that. So. All right, still talking about crime. On business day, uh, on page 51, there's actually a story here on ICPC probing a billion Naira salary fraud syndicate in the Federal Civil Service. Mm. Yeah, that's what we're saying. When they're saying yes, governor, we have all manner of corruption. Now, like I always said, I believe in solution. This thing has been with us for many years. And every day we keep talking about all these left and right. Either governor, either minister, either palastatus, or this thing. Now, we are charging a new administration to create something that will stop all these leakages. We have 
go in a way of single treasury, but they are, we have seen that they still find a way around single treasury whereby they are still taking money from our system. Nigeria have money. I keep saying it. All this debt is not needed if we are able to look inward and see and block all the leakages. So I believe like what Tinobu did when he was a governor, when he came in under the civil service, he introduced or acquired database management as a data, which is a software to able to feature the civil service commission and check out uh, the, and get the ghost workers and get a lot of things out money to, to block loopholes. So I still believe there is still a way around, I mean, there is still a way out for all these things. Because it's better to prevent than aftermath all these things we are seeing. Because at the end of the day, we have had a story of somebody, a former captain general of this country, that stole or allegedly stole 80 billion or so. Now they have not recovered that 80 billion. And the man is free as I'm talking to you. So is it not better to not allow the 80 billion to occur than occurring and now treat it with litigation, which we have a lot of lacuna in our laws. So my own charge is that let this new administration find a lasting solution to block all these leakages in every parasata. Right. So that will help us not to be arrested. And we don't need all those too much. Okay, before we let you go, uh, the Benue State Governor, uh, his own last minute handover was to hand himself uh, a severance package in the face of 187 billion naira debt. Uh, he signed off um, a severance package for himself and ex governors to be backdated. Uh, cars, houses, and all this. <laughs> you see, <laughs> if you were the incoming governor of Benue State today, what you know your first action. You know the first, the funny thing in our law is that, as a governor too, if you can the only thing you can only do is to set up an inquiry committee. That is how funny it is. That's the only thing you can do. He can only rec after setting up an inquiry committee and they find him indicted. He can only now write a petition to ICPC, ASCC, and police for proper prosecution and arrest. As a governor, you can't do it. You so can't are you saying, you as a anything. governor, he cannot repeal? That is not. That I just. I have just explained the process to you. The only thing he can do. Have you ever seen a governor probe the former governor before in this country? Or I mean, they will probe, but have you ever seen them proceed on either litigation or whatever with them? No. They can only set up inquiry, and they set up six month inquiry. They find him indicted. They will not submit the report or write petition to the SEC or an ICPC for him to be arrested and prosecuted. And along the line, if it's another party, they will begin to tell you there is a political reshot. So, how long are we going to leave all this thing? So, that's what I'm saying. It is better we look for a way, either at the state level and at the federal level, to block all these things. They have national, uh, House of Assembly member that they can kick against this. But they will not. Hmm. So how long are we going to be saying, governor are doing what they like because they have, they have already captured the thought arms of the government at the state level, which is not supposed to be so. Hmm. How many times have you seen a National Assembly speaker attacking or not attacking per se, just giving contrary opinion to what governor is saying in any state? Have you ever seen it in the newspaper? Oh, right. we, are, we are in a nation whereby every day by day, when you hear figure, and in the same state, we have a lot, we have a lot of IDP camps, in the same venue. And he is the first person that will come on TV and be crying that nah, everywhere is IDPs in Benue, everywhere is IDPs, but he's the first person now giving himself a, a bondu allowance. All right. Um, that's you do not pay salary for eight months, too, mind you. <laughs> that's the much we can take <laughs> from uh, Dr. Larry Oluadi, public affairs analyst, who has provided us insight and perspectives on what the newspapers are saying this morning. We want to thank you very much for finding time to be here. Thank you very and, much. And uh, we look forward to the after party. I mean, it's not enough to come out like the Jagaban. You have to, <laughs> you have to host us to an after party. Uh, yes. I look forward to my, to my begiri and uh, <laughs> it do and it will do. <laughs> <laughs> after the show and viewers that's it on newspaper review we will take a short break we return at the top of the hour and the show continues please stay with us
when the situation where you find that they must look like the same not necessarily uh, like tribal or regional All right, thank you very much. If you're just joining us, it's Daybreak on Trust Television. And uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the second round of um, today's proceeding. This flight sets sail at um, 8 a.m. If you have missed out on anything, not to worry. We still have loads of interesting package coming your way. And the conversation today is one you don't want to miss. And uh, I can assure you we have uh, very able uh, Nigerians who will do justice to some of the issues that will be agitating your minds and uh, as well as other Nigerians, uh, especially as we hand over Batin to a new administration today. I am Sunday Michael Ogu and um, it's Daybreak on Trust Television. And I'm Dasha and Hussein Usman. Thank you so much for staying with us. All right, moving on quickly to the highlights on this uh, Buhari Science Bill excluding National Assembly workers from contributory pension. Don prefers solutions to insecurity terrorism in Nigeria. And um, Canada announces faster visa processing for Nigerian families and others. Now let's take a look at the details. President Muhammad Buhari has assented to the National Assembly Service Pensions Board bill and two others. The bill, which has become an act, seeks to exclude National Assembly workers and others from the mandatory contributory pension scheme. In a statement on Sunday, signed by Senator Babajide Omowarare, he said it was in furtherance of the provisions of Section 58 of the Constitution and the Act's authentication Act Cap A2 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. He also passed into law the establishment of the El Madjeri National Commission and the Federal Road Safety Commission Training Institute. The Act seeks to provide a multimodal system of education to tackle the menace of illiteracy, develop skill acquisition and entrepreneurship programs and prevent youth poverty, delinquency and destitution in Nigeria. The president also assented to the Federal Road Safety Commission Training Institution's Establishment Bill for capacity building and training in road traffic administration and safety management and to provide training for members of Federal Road Safety Corps. Moving on, a university done and security consultant, Professor Bola Akintariwa, has maintained that the only way to overcome the insecurity and terrorism challenges confronting the country is to fight the menace without political, religious or ethnic coloration. Professor Akintariwa, a former director general of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, explained that the missing strategic approach behind the spread of terrorism includes the tendency of government to underestimate the strength of the terrorist, indulgence in self-deceit and strategic miscalculation, failure to involve youth in the fight against terrorism, and the myopia of leaders in po political social political security governance. The scholar urged the federal government to discourage religious bigotry, ethnic chauvinism, and political economic chancellery in order to uproot the domestic pillars of terrorism, stop the growth of terrorism, and declare a total non-partisan war on the use of terror. He also urged Nigerians to do away with playing the cards of ethnic and religious prejudices for political purposes, urging them to throw the toga of selfishness and irrationalities into the garbage of history, calling on the government to formulate and implement policies and program, programs that will address the root cause of insecurity in the country. All right, with that, we wrap up highlights at this hour. Now, let's move on to more stories. 
Canada has introduced a new and faster means of a visa processing that allows Nigerian families and others to be together while they await their permanent residence permits. Now, this development comes days after the United Kingdom banned students from Nigeria and other foreign countries on study visas now from bringing their families into the country. According to the Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship, Sean Fraser, the new measures are put in place to strengthen family reunification in Canada. The immigration minister noted that the new policy uses advanced analytics and technology to process temporary residence visa applications for family members of permanent residents and citizens in 30 days. Now, the minister said the development was Canada's commitment to ensure that families are together, especially during life's big moments like moving to a new country. In 2022, Canada issued more than 1,075,000 work permits and work uh, permits extensions. All right. Um, with that, um, we would um, wrap up um, a highlights on the hour. We will cross over momentarily to Eagle Square to get a feel of what's happening at the venue of the handing over of baton from President Muhammadu Buhari to President in the waiting, Bola Ahmed Tinibu. Yeah. The broom being used today. Mm. You see that solitary yes, woman yeah. with her broom. Mm. She's, doing, the floor. she's doing the Nigerian thing. Mm. I think it rained overnight. Okay. Yes. And so you have all of these power symbol mm. symbols of power. Mm. Mm. And um, there's a broom in front. Mm. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's really interesting. That's a broom in <laughs> that, that's really interesting. interesting. That's not an intended mm. picture. Yeah, yeah. But it just calls attention yeah, to itself. Yeah. Look at the look, look at the the colorful uniforms yeah, and yeah, all of that. Yeah. Look at the you know strict formation. Yeah. And then there's a woman. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, it's daybreak on Trust Television. Uh, we just gave you a snippet of how prepared um, Igu Square is this morning. You know, we had some uh, showers of blessings, if you like, uh, this morning, in what appears to be setting the tone. The right kind of weather because it's been very hot in Abuja lately. Well, uh, for noticed. what promises to be a very interesting. Uh, for the first time, I saw the super tucanos flying over yeah. Abuja. <laughs> have you, have you actually <laughs> noticed that when there's like a big event happening in Nigeria, there's always showers of rain? 
Yeah, um, uh, some persons would tell you with some uh, super religious affiliation that it, it's some <laughs> kind of tacit approval from the Almighty that, <laughs> that things will go well. Uh, moving on to our first discussion this morning that would set tone for what a big event today is. Um, it's about the transition and change, they say, is inevitable and it is usually hard at first, but sometimes it turns out beautiful at the end. The conduct of the 2023 general elections and the emergence of a new leader has paved way for the taking over of the mantle of leadership of the next, for the next four years. And now with the next few hours, the inauguration of the new president and his vice, as well as other elected political holders will take place. The main tags before them is working for Nigeria's overall development. Our focus on daybreak this morning is the tags before the new corps of leaders, crops of leaders in that will be taking over Nigeria, hopefully, to greatness. And to discuss this topic, we have in the studio two gentlemen, but one at first, um, and they are no other than our own regular. Uh, I dare to call him today, Bale Baba Yusuf, mm -hmm. a strategist, uh, policy analyst, and group CEO of Global Investment and Trading Company. And also, we are expecting in the studio any moment from now a political scientist from the Department of Political Science, University of Abuja, Dr. Olu Alagunju, gentleman. Uh, if you like, Bale, you are welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Sunday. Thank you for saying that. All right. Um, had I known you were coming out like this, I would have also talked up with you about Bale. Uh, <laughs> and Guys. maybe some stuff, some studio stuff to, to, to accomplish. To compliment, yeah. Yes, but uh, it's a beautiful Monday morning in Nigeria. Yes, um, so much um, had happened. Uh, so much water has passed under the bridge uh, mm. ahead of today. Uh, it was one of the most intense, uh, intense campaign period in the history of this country. Um, narratives, very dangerous narratives, uh, went under the water. Largely because we had candidates coming from each of the major political, uh, I mean, each of the major ethnic uh, uh, nationality in Nigeria. And, and all of that had come and gone. Uh, the country is calm against um, all of the narratives of the dooms doomsday uh, prediction uh, or naysayers about how this country is prepared to go to the flames. How do you feel to start with, even though you're not the one taking over the reins of Nigeria, but what does it feel like that after everything that we are where we are today? Thank you, Sunday and Usena for having me. And indeed, it's a good question to ask us how we feel Thing, how we feel is even more important than how the incoming president or governors feel. Our feelings are key. Personally, I'm very happy. I'm elated. I'm excited. Reason being that um, against all fake and false negative narratives, prophecies, whatnot, we are here today, mm -hmm. Sunday and Usena. Nigerians are cool. Nigerians are peaceful. Uh, people have been saying this day will not come and if it comes all manner of things will happen well we are here today and um, whatever on the current that is going on has not stopped the constitutional you know uh, requirement for us to execute today Ashwa Jubola Ahmad Tinubu will be sworn in by the grace of Allah today a new dispensation will begin I'm happy because of that because it means we are closing a chapter and indeed we are opening a new one Hopefully, this will open a vista for better things to come in Nigeria. Uh, so to that extent, I'm very happy. Okay, so um, this particular question I'm about to ask, you know, a lot of people would actually want to know uh, what you think. Do you, do you think the incoming administration would actually, you know, do better than the outgoing? I am confident and optimistic, let me put it that way, not just think, I am confident and optimistic that the new dispensation will be better than the outgoing. One, from a practical point of view, as a Nigerian, I want Nigeria to be better. Two, from a strategic point of view, the timing of this change of baton is such that um, it is happening when a person would experience political sagacity high network local and international, positive antecedents and pedigree is coming on board. 
mm. at a critical time where Nigeria is at a crossroads with regards to the various issues we have. So I am very, very competent, com confident and optimistic that indeed the days ahead will be better than the days we have seen. Uh, you know, uh, you look at the rear view mirror when you are driving to see what has happened. Not just for you to know what is there, but for also to also guide your steps moving forward. Uh, if you look at the antecedents of the man coming on board, Ashwajibola Ahmad Tinubu, his track record in terms of politics, in terms of governance, in terms of business, and even with his consulting background, he is a man that is multi-skilled. And I, that is why I say it's a special time. A man with a mix of talents that maybe are required and skill sets to do the needful for us to be sure-footed moving forward in terms of all the myriad of issues we have. Now, based on that, I'm confident. If you look at also the subnationals, some of the governors that have emerged as governors of state also indicate, I mean, give me some kind of interest. And I'm excited that possibly we will have a departure from where we are today, where majority of the governors are perennial underachievers mm. when it comes to governance. Uh, and that is rubbing off the presidency. Most of the people in Nigeria, because of the figure of the president, and in fairness to Nigerians, because of the huge amount of power residing in the position of the president, forget that there are other critical deliverers of good governance at the subnationals that are consistently failing. Indeed, there are a minority of them who we must say we give kudos to that are performing, but we need to move forward. It needs to cascade from national to subnational. I'm confident that things will be better moving forward. All right, All right. just a follow up now. <laughs> You'd agree with me that there are lots of challenges, you know, yeah, facing absolutely. Nigeria. Yeah. So, what key issues do you think the incoming administration should actually prioritize? Oh, I don't envy the incoming president, <laughs> to be honest, especially given that very strangely, Sunday and Usena, very strangely, it doesn't have every, happen every other day. You know, uh, a ruling party handing over to one of their own, but interestingly and strangely, you know, developing inadvertently or deliberately booby traps for this gentleman coming in. Mm all manner of issues in the last three weeks that leaves mm. most to be desired with yeah. regards to, you know, a handover of a government that is already in dire streets. Mm. You know, so to that extent, it is going to be a Herculean tax for the income, for the president, you know, incoming president to deliver. Uh, and therefore, sequencing the critical next, uh, critical next steps are very important for Ashwaju. I'm very sure he has sorted out that because uh, he had a strategic blueprint as a strategist that he is he must have been tweaking as things are evolving first and critical is to deal with the issue of insecurity according to the global firepower you know rating index nigeria ranks fourth in africa in terms of military power in terms of uh, security capacity behind egypt behind Algeria, for example. Mm. And yet, we constitute almost 16 to 17% of the African populace, the biggest black nation in the world, mm. has, you know, come down from where it used to be, a pride of place. Mm. You know, the name of Nigeria sends shivers to the spine of other nations, especially in the continent of Africa. Mm. Now, with the issues on ground and the, the state of the moral capacity and leadership quality of our military, and the situation with multidimensional insecurity issues from banditry to terrorism to, 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 to separatist efforts, all these are issues that have to be sorted out before you do any other thing. Indeed, except where there is security, peace and harmony, that you start talking about prosperity. Secondly, there's need, and I must say this, some of these critical next steps have to happen pari passu, concurrently, because uh, there is no time to wait and sequence in a way and manner that you have to close one session to deal with the other. The second one is immediately. I'm very much looking forward to the speech of the president, uh, incoming president. And I, from that move, I want to hear him add to what he has started doing. If you hear his acceptance speech, he said 
He made two critical statements, amongst others. The first one is recognizing the need for national healing. Very important. He is coming, becoming president at a time that Nigeria is highly polarized, the most polarized time in our history. Tempers have flared up. People are worried and, and afraid of what next to happen. You know, so people need to be reassured. Nigeria needs to be reassured. Ashwaja needs to reassure Nigerians that he's going to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, not the president of one region or indeed the president of the All Progressives Congress. Uh, he has become a president on the platform of the APC. But for the APC, Ashwaja has become our president, okay, on the platform of the party. Of course, he will continue to align with the manifesto and the ideology of the party, but the job is for Nigeria. So there is need to engender that confidence. There is need to engender that hope in line with his, the title of his you know, strategic blueprint, the renewed hope agenda. We need to hear that in his speech to assure us that um, the unity will be fostered moving forward. Thirdly, is of course to deal with the issue of the economy. Multidimensional issues from where he's going to inherit half of, over half of the population are declared multidimensionally poor. <laughs> He's going to get a very big package bequeathed to him over 77 trillion naira debt stock as his parting gift, right? He's going to receive a, an economy that is having a debt to GDP ratio of about 23%. He's going to inherit a country that has glided down from a foreign direct investment profile of about 1.5 billion in 2017 to about a paltry sum of about 430 to 60 million dollars as of date. The numbers, I can continue really. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is this, there are issues, but of course they are not insurmountable. The capacity of the leader and his multiple skills, and of course his ability, critical amongst his skills, is the ability to, you know, identify talents and nationalists patriotic Nigerians that will work with him. Absolutely. And that brings me to the next question because um, listening to you, I get the... Um, I, I understand from our control room that um, the Chief Justice of the Federation has arrived uh, the venue. Uh, that's the man at the center of today's event mm. uh, with whom you can be sure that this immigration is sacrosanct. Yes. Um, he's just arrived at Eagle Square, and uh, we are showing you live pictures from Eagle Square now uh, to, to herald his, his arrival. And any moment from now, the principal players in this event would um, also take center stage. Mm. All right, back to the studio. Uh, we are still here with our guest, um, obviously. And um, the question today, I mean, listening to you, uh, one gets the sense that... Um, we are in an operating room. Mm. And uh, in our own case, there will be no room for anesthesia. Absolutely. Uh, that would mean just um, uh, uh, injecting us to death. Mm. Uh, it means some of this surgical operation you talk about must happen while we are still breathing with, with minimal uh, painkillers. And you said something that is very key, finding the right Nigerians. Erufai spoke to this shortly after the emergence of this president, and he said you should not be under pressure to want to reward the people who had worked for him prior to his emergence. You also spoke to healing. Healing would then mean finding people from across the divide that would help drive the Nigerian agenda. There yes. are so many people like yourself who are very skilled, have the right kind of education and worldview, but are not interested in politics. Mm -hmm. And until you reach out for them, they will just be in their cocoon, doing their thing, living a good life, providing for their family, and that's all. How critical is that finding the right skills, especially with all of the things we hear about the, 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 the lobbying that is happening from here. The man goes to France to catch a day or two of rest and people are flooding there. <laughs> he goes to, to Jeddah and everybody suddenly heads to Jeddah. How critical is it, especially judging from how this administration fared with so many of his key personnel just, just answering roll call? until the end. How critical is it to find the right personnel that will enable him to spread his tentacles? Sandy, if you want me to tell you the potential outcomes of a regime 
or tenure of any leader, the first thing I will tell you is wait until I see the team. Mm. The team makes or breaks the leader. Mm. Whether it is in public sector, whether it is in private sector, whether it is in anything, in governance, even in traditional institutions, a monarchy, whatever, the team makes the leader. Now, taking it from there, there is no gain saying that the way we are now, what Tinubu is inheriting, does, there is no time for too much sentiments. There is no time for too much sentiments because so much time has been lost in the last eight years. I hear clearly, loud and clear, the conversations around not wanting to, you know, lean towards all those that have quote and unquote worked for Tinubu, for example, but rather look at, you know, competence capacity. I totally agree. And the beautiful thing here about the whole situation is Nigeria is so blessed, Sonia Nusena, that from every nook and cranny of Nigeria, you can get the best of the best. Mm. There is no region that you will say, oh, we don't have much there. And the good thing is, Tenubu understands that team effort delivers. And that is why he delivered as governor of Lagos State for, seven, for eight years. And that is why I believe he's going to deliver again. And if you speak to his colleagues, at ExxonMobil, they will tell you the same thing, mm. how he was able to achieve not alone, but with a team that is formidable, that is credible, and that is competent. Interesting. Uh, we go back to Eagle Square, where we understand that the service chiefs have just arrived, and they are taking the general salute, as you can see from your screen, and mm. they have also moved on. Uh, practically, the, the serenity we see in the, capitals, in the federal capital and across the country today, the the assurance of safety mm. you know that overwhelms the entire occasion and this country as we speak is a function of these four uh, gentlemen uh, who had just arrived the venue and uh, by extension and in relation to what we have said earlier it also guarantees that this event is fully secured <laughs> and prepared mm. for what is one of the biggest occasion on the continent of africa as we speak uh, this moment Okay, now, uh, just uh, earlier, we actually saw the Chief Justice, you know, arrive the uh, Eagle Square. And it just occurred to me, you know, uh, talking about Nigeria and also the, the judicial system. Now, I actually want you, uh, I want to know what you would actually propose to strengthen the Nigerian democracy and also reform the country's justice system. It will be a function of the vision and the mindset of the president commander in chief interestingly the nigerian political structure empowers the president so much that there's little room to maneuver with regards to control mm. the judiciary is basically almost cut in hand begging at the doorstep of the president almost every time for even food to eat mm. for clothes to wear for vehicles to use, for materials to work on. You need to see how, you know, if you are a friend of the legal profession, mm -hmm. how judges work. Working with long hearts day and night, they practically don't have a life. Mm -hmm. Now, the autonomy of the judiciary in line clearly with the spelled out in the Constitution in action is going to be critical to up upscaling the quality of the deliverance of justice in Nigeria. Mm -hmm in terms of how they function, in terms of how they deliver. So long as that is not done, they will continue to be leaning and subservient to become a quasi-sub-department of the executive rather than a clear different arm of government. Mm. You know, so it's how that will evolve will determine, how he executes will determine. Mm. All right. President. We will take a quick breather uh, for our guests to catch his breath. When we return, uh, it will be even a more robust um, house and we will take deeper dive um, into what is happening. We'll take you back into Igui Square shortly and then we'll bring you back to the studio. Please stay with us.
All right, we are now joined in the studio by Dr. Olu, Olu Alagunju, if I'm not uh, wrong, doctor. Uh, permit me if I am. Uh, the studio is my, when we get back to the classroom, you can, you can uh, <laughs> extend the long stick. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Alagunju is of the Political Science Department of the University of Abuja. It's a pleasure to have you join us this Thank morning. Thank you for having me in All this right. historical moment. Interesting. Uh, we have been looking at uh, several developments, especially as it concerns today, and we have been talking with Baba Yusuf before your coming in. We, we, we're trying to extract the mood of the country the hopes and expectations and the issues that led uh, you know to to this day the the campaigns uh, the the toughest if you like in our nation's history if you would agree with me i i i would like to hear your perspective but uh, to start with you uh, immediately putting you on the on the firing uh, uh, line how would you gauge the mood of the country uh, on a day like this I, I, and i say that in the face of the kind of elections we had. Tinibu scored the highest vote, but um, if you look at um, the combination of all of the results he scored, um, if you put the other contenders side by side, they seem to have scored more. In other words, he scored uh, less votes. Uh, when you look at the overall votes of 15 million, he scored about um, eight. I mean, you look at the overall vote, about 15 million other Nigerians voted for a different candidate apart from him. But um, as an individual, he scored the highest vote, which implied that a lot of people had a different thinking towards who they thought uh, should be the president. And what usually or typically happens is the attitude of, since we didn't vote for him, let us just sit and see and watch what he does. What would be your message, you know? to those kind of Nigerians, especially as we say that politics is over, it's now time for nation building. What kind of mindset should we begin to cultivate, knowing fully well that however he performs would rub off on each and every one of us, regardless of wherever we have stood prior to uh, the elections? Mm, th thank you so much. Uh, I will begin by saying it is a process which has really evolved and a winner has emerged whichever way you want to look at it a winner has emerged and those who are aggrieved have been advised to you know to follow the legal and constitutional way of going to court but uh, the most important thing now in this country is to focus on on how we can move Nigeria forward we have a president we are to rally around the president irrespective of these divergent views, whether you vote for him or not, a president has emerged. And as a patriotic Nigerian, as somebody who loves this country, who loves this um, project, the best thing for, for the populace at this time is to rally around this new government and see that he succeeds. We cannot do otherwise. The figure and fact has established that is the winner. So the best thing for us all is to ensure that is succeed because we don't have another country we call our own this is our country everybody should rally around him to make sure he succeed beyond that beyond that we we have a process like i said those who are aggrieved are waiting to hear from the court and they should allow this process to really to really take its course 
Uh, for those who felt um, aggrieved, we don't have another country. We have a winner already. We have to rally around Tinubu so that it can succeed. Uh, on Twitter, there are some uh, trending saying that uh, it's not my president. But the figure and fact said is the winner based on our constitutional arrangement. So we have no option at this time. And if you want to go beyond this, God has destiny him to be. If you look at the trajectory, in the nobody thought he would get the primary ticket so easy. Lot of um, antis went to play, and he emerged as um, the party yeah. representative yeah. aspirant. And at the election too, where we felt oh he would get it so easy, was not that easy. He lost some very important states like Lagos, and at the end of it all, this person still emerged. They, we should. Um, we should just be relaxed and just believe that God has hand in this. And we have to just rally around him because we cannot challenge destiny. Absolutely. So Coming to you, uh, Dr. Baba, before we say that takes over. Mm -hmm. You were saying something before we went on break that's critical. And um, I'm going to draw this question from what you said, the, your admonitions before now. And um, looking at the series of events leading to today. At the banquet and at the other events um, to organize for those who won election, we, you listened to Bishop Kuka. Yeah. You also listened to Uhuru uh, Kenyatta uh, offer advices to the new president on how not to go. And they said something critical. Uh, it was about managing victory. Uh, it, it is one thing to win, it's another to understand that you are going to be superintending a multi ethnic multi-dimensional uh, multicultural society and um, it, it is important that you don't diminish a set of your populace in the in the bid to celebrate uh, what what you term as a victory because at the end of the day you need the entire nation to galvanize the entire nation in the same direction to be seen as succeeding how how is he going to manage this this critical because he talked about it and it's one thing but strategically, uh, from a point of strategy, what are those things he needs to start doing to begin to assure people that you can trust me, you can be rest assured that I have your best interest and we are headed for the same direction? Thank you for that question, Sunday. <clears throat> um, before we went on break, what I, I remember what I was saying that Tinubu should be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria not the president of a region, tribe, ethnic, religious group, or the president of the APC. Mm. He should be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, how will he demonstrate that question? Today, I'm very eager to hear his speech. I always like to hear his speech because it always comes out, you know, with some nuggets and takeouts, mm. like the acceptance speech. He talked about national healing. Yes. Okay. He spoke to the youth and said, I hear you loud and clear. Mm -hmm. Together, we'll chart the way forward. Mm -hmm. Now, those are takeouts to tell you his disposition and inclination on how he's going to govern. Moving forward from the speech, I expect in the next one week, the first critical appointment he's going to make to demonstrate national balance in terms of federal character but not in any way diminishing the importance, critical importance Very of competence, capacity of these people. And of course, their credibility to work with him. That being said also, to roll out for us, even if it is high level, mm -hmm. take out from his Renewed Hope agenda, discussions about this national healing or unity conversation. Mm -hmm. Let us start hearing some sound bites about what is coming Mm. Nigerians need appetizer right now to keep their hope alive. Mm. Both those that are for him and those that are against him. Because we are all eating from the same pot. Because you are in APC or you support Tinubu, doesn't mean life is actually different from the one that supports Peter Obu or Atiku. That's right. right? All the critical issues of Nigeria are hitting almost everybody, directly or indirectly. So to that extent, those critical next steps is going to take in terms of appointment, in terms of his, his, his narrative now will be more of a governance narrative than a political campaign narrative. Almost everything Tinubu will say moving forward in the next one month will be x-rayed and 
under microscope mm -hmm. and it will almost become a policy statement yes. and therefore what we look forward to is the body language the narrative and the action to demonstrate that i believe he will do that and ask me why mm. right from his the beginning of his political career the gentleman has demonstrated some level of nationalistic inclination appointments in his administration in lagos state demonstrator today we have the likes of ben akabwezi mm. DG of the Debt Management mm -hmm. Office, was in his cabinet in Lagos. He pulled out people from different states in Nigeria to come and work with him in Lagos. Now, for me, that demonstrates the kind of person we are going to come on board. All I'm looking forward to is upscaling those qualities and those antecedents to the national level. Mm. Uh, government of inclusivity, you had Ihuru Kenyatta talking about inclusiveness, talking about reaching out even to the political adversaries. He has that political sagacity. And during the build-up to the swearing-in, we had, you know, people like Konkoso having meetings with him. These are the kind of steps that will engender some level of confidence. Of course, I don't expect others to do that now. But continuously, that political sagacity, that ability to reach out, that high level of emotional intelligence that he has displayed time and again. Don't forget, even within the APC, there are issues and reaching out to build the bridge to bring the party together to become one united family because there is no danger from a strategic point of view than disgruntled elements within your camp. Tenibu knows that more than any other person. Okay, uh, Mr. Baba actually talked about um, uh, the incoming uh, president's uh, political journey and also talked about... Uh, inclusive governance now would also like to hear from you what your take is because he has actually reiterated the need for political you know uh, competition and he also said uh, this is a way to actually give political conciliation to an inclusive government so I would also like to hear your thoughts on that yeah it is uh, very important that the president elect he the country because uh, before this time the country has been so divided so mm -hmm. divided along ethnic line along tribal line mm -hmm. along religion so we need somebody who now reconcile reconcile in the sense that uh, the first thing i'm expecting is in the appointment for instance mm -hmm. we want to see the type of appointment it will make from different ethnic groups and tribal groups that will reflect a kind of national outlook that will reflect inclusiveness that will reflect at least reconciliatory move because leave it or take it some people have been so aggrieved that uh, in fact in, in, in terms of religion for instance people felt muslim muslim ticket muslim being the president muslim being the vice president so a lot of people are, are political about this disposition already but uh, we want to see in your appointment critical appointment we want to see that all nook and cranny of this country is reflected in your appointment because uh, there is no region in this country that is lacking in human resources mm -hmm. and as a very good human resource manager who have uh, developed people over the years i'm thinking it should look far beyond ethnic and region politics and look for nigerians that are capable because they are all a mass in every nook and clarity of this country so in the first place i want to see the the appointment is going to make to at least reflect the 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 the, the multi-dimensional ethnic groups in nigeria and the tribal and the and the um what do i call it diverse tribal background of this country so we want to look at that appointment if that appointment will reflect will reflect that national outlook then we'll be fee we'll feel that okay we have a president for the very first time that is trying to unite the country the unity is talking about should come from that appointment first from there okay. we know that okay. that president well, is serious how long do you think it should take him to be able to, you know, uh, gather his team and make the appointment? Like uh, Baba said, during this inauguration, we want to listen to the speech from the speech because whatever he says now is more or less a political pronouncement. And people will weigh these utterances at the end of the, mm -hmm. the, the, the tenure. Mm -hmm. You said you are going to do this, you are going to do this. Mm -hmm. So from this inauguration speech, yes, we can deduct some... Um, some point that oh he promised to do this yes he can do it he has the capacity he has done it before he has a very bigger platform now to do it and somebody who 
who have traveled across this country to campaign, the death of a um, resource person will not be a point. Of course, he will do that with time. And I'm expecting we, in, in, in the last, um, let's say within, the, within, within a month, we should know the direction of this government. And I'm sure he has penciled down some people who may not be core politicians to work with him because he knows what development is and he knows how to go about achieving it. All right. Okay. Um, coming back to you, um, it's, it's inauguration day. This is the biggest prize on the last uh, political activity. So it, it does appear like this is the only thing happening. Uh, but there are power changing hands in 24 other states of the Federation, 18 of them, in fact, freshers. Um, and, and you said something that was instructive in your opening remark, uh, um, which is how somehow we have become disenchanted with subnational governments that we all seem to anchor on, on, on the presidency. And um, I mean, over 50% of our resources actually end up in the state and local government. Yes. Uh, so we should be demanding accountability at that level of um, uh, governance. But it does appear that because they have proven to be unaccountable, we have left them to their fate and we now direct all our attention to just where under 50, just about 50% of the resources um, reside. What kind of political consciousness do you think we need to start building from people like you and who nurture the minds of the future? Uh, to even our society, to begin to bring up people who demand accountability. And I say this with all sense of responsibility. Some of the things we endure in this country, at the southern, if you give it to an average Arab, the, the entire country will be on flames. Or even the average Americans, they won't take it sitting down. You know, why do we endure, why do we tolerate these governors to the level where they have become an authority unto themselves? In fact, sometimes even coming together under the pretense of the governor's forum to even subvert the, 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 the constitution. With regards to, for instance, uh, the direct uh, dis uh, disbursement of uh, federal account uh, allocations to the local government where the real governance uh, is, is, is supposed to happen, or even finding a way of stopping constitutional reforms at the state assembly that, that dwells on something that, that they are not interested in. How do we begin to build that? that, um, that uh, before you answer that, I understand uh, that the president-elect has just arrived. You can imagine the amount of crowd mm -hmm. uh, that seem to accompany uh, him to the state box, um, uh, which, which would um, herald about the high point, I think, any moment from now. We will then have the president arrive and formally uh, the handing over process will be on the way. Um, he's now currently being ushered into the state box. And um, like we, I was telling Baba earlier, this is where reality sets in. Absolutely. Right? You know, the crowd can see you up to the gate, but as you can see clearly, it's just right, him, sorry, yes. uh, his oh, wife, right, right. and probably his elderly that are allowed to go into that state. But every other person will have to take a back seat from I here. I actually <laughs> saw the SGF walking away. We, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, so, how do we begin to build that kind of political consciousness um, across the the various states of this country to demand the level of accountability that we sort of see play out when it comes to uh, holding the federal government to, to this team. Oh, thank you. The, the type of democracy we practice in Nigeria is not the original type that started in Greek and America, so to say. There are some features of democracy that are not practicable in Nigeria. The supremacy of the law, for instance, constitutionalism and the rest, majority of them are not respected in this country. When you demand for accountability from a governor, the next thing you see, you are arrested, you are detained unconstitutionally. Mm. You are detained unconstitutionally. Lot of people have been, you know, victimized in a democracy. Even when the law says you cannot be detained more than 24 hours and the rest, they will go to court and get injunction to delay you further. Perpetually. So I have I have lot of friends who have. Uh, written articles of opinion and the rest demanding for accountability and they didn't hand well mm. just to tell you that um, supremacy of the law here some people are not banned by that law mm. is in fact nigerian laws are just made for the for the poor there are some um, laws that did not really apply to the to the rich and the political class because uh, yes people are talking people are people are writing people are asking questions but the the suppression Hmm. The suppression, the victimization did not really 
encourage people to do that whenever you raise your voice is either you are silent by giving you appointment or they they really take you out you know these politicians are desperate and they don't want any opposing view they don't want any opposing view so not that people are not talking not that they don't know they are right and another thing that uh, the population should do they should take advantage of this um, information act bill which allows citizens access to some vital information and when you have this information you can ask sir we are sure that uh, so, so 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 amount has been budgeted for this project how far have you gone this you have spent eight years and they, we are told that the implementation of this project should not go beyond eight years what happened why is it abandoned and the rest yes you might ask questions but you might not get answers for this mm -hmm. not that citizens are not taking the steps they are taking it but these voice are not heard maybe maybe this new government will come with that friendly hand that will make us to ask more questions all right uh baba we moving away from all of this to begin to set agenda for the new president uh, beyond the appointments of his executives um, while we were reviewing the papers today, uh, Shea Usani somewhere was saying that um, <laughs> <laughs> this administration has set uh, booby traps for the incoming administration. And I mean, if you review the activities of the last 30 days, it does appear uh, to be like that. Um, you know, there are critical, critical decisions that we missed the opportunity to have taken in the last eight years. One of them is for subsidy. Uh, you know, uh, and now that will be confronting this administration uh, whether or not to take out what appears to be a six trillion era canker worm on, on our budgeting system and public financing or carry on with it and even get worse because the Americans are already predicting uh, that oil may hit $90 in, in, in the coming days. Uh, and, and several others, we, reforms in the electricity sector, somehow we don't seem to have made the kind of gains that we had expected. And why I say so is that this administration, the current or outgoing administration, arrived on a high yeah. in terms of public confidence, in terms of the antecedent of the president. And uh, I mean, in the north, uh, permit me to use vernacular here, he, he was described as me, Gaskia. You know, somebody the people had expected would be the beacon of justice uh, for them and, and, and would make decisions that would ultimately protect the poor. But like you said, we are confronted with multidimensional poverty. Clearly, yes. it means that whatever we are doing don't seem to have, a, you know, hit the mark the way we wanted and transform people's life the way we had expected. How is this new president going to take on this issue at all? Is it, should we, while he still have the goodwill to dispense, confront these issues head on? take on all the fights and the, and the blows and then begin to settle down and catch our breath later or have some time to look at the issues again before he takes the decision? Thank you. Uh, the right thing for him to do, which I think he should, is to open what I call, first of all, look at the book of reality. The book of reality is not the handover notes that will be given to him for the outgoing president. Hmm. The book of reality are the issues that will precipitate from his own situation analysis that will be done by his core team. Any attempt to take any decision without looking at the situation analysis, critical decisions like subsidy and all that, for example, may backfire. Mm. Don't forget, I said earlier that booby traps were set for him, whether deliberately or inadvertently. But importantly, it's coming at a time that there is global and national socio-economic issues. Mm. So, the dynamism of our polity is, directs that he needs to actually see the actuals mm. before he takes such critical decisions. Mm. Some decisions may be populist in nature, but executing them now may backfire on the economy and backfire on the people, despite the fact that it, is, it would have been a laudable one on the lips and on the tongues. However, all said, Political will drives governance, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Political will drives governance. And that is what we intend to, what, what I am expecting, and what a lot of Nigerians are expecting from Ashwadi Bola Ahmad Tinubu. Another advantage he has is the corporate experience, the experience in the corporate world. We that have operated on both sides understand why we say so. Performance is measured by results, not by events. Yes. Timeline, timeline critical things needs to be done. If you don't do it, 
Ashwaju will take you out of that role because it will impact on the overall performance of the country. Now, with that experience, with that pedigree, I believe that he will be more sure-footed in difference to the outgoing president. Mm. That corporate experience on one side, that business experience, don't forget, is a student of market economy, free market, and all that. So I believe that he also moved towards removing the hands of government from, the, from business to issues of governance and enablement. Mm -hmm. And that will help streamline and uh, the governance framework and make it more efficient. So critical decisions that are strategic and highly impactful like subsidy will only be taken because what he might have been thinking seven months ago have changed with all these booby traps. So I think that is where he will be able to take such critical decisions. All right. Um, we will cross over to Igu Square uh, at the moment. We understand, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, a very important uh, dignitary has just arrived the scene. Um, and I'm sure you have that screen. Johnny, you're looking at us uh, directly, is uh, the owner of IFE. And I think the chairman of the NDLE, quite a number of uh, statesmen uh, in the state box this morning. And directly below is the president of... Uh, of Niger, uh, but I think the president has just arrived the venue, if I'm not um, uh, mistaken. Events are gradually building up to, to the apex, and uh, we will keep you all connected, we will keep you all glued, uh, whilst we take a uh, very informed analysis about what to expect. Uh, if not, I think it's the vice president, uh, the current vice president that has just arrived, uh, the venue. We will continue to share these pictures with you as um, these developments uh, continue to expand. Okay, uh, now let's uh, come back to you, uh, Doctor. Now, uh, during the outgoing president's uh, farewell broadcast yesterday, he mentioned that uh, some of the measures that they took led to temporary, you know, uh, temporary pain and suffering of Nigerians. And I'm still linking it to, uh, you know, the question that he asked about poverty and everything. So uh, now what strap, you would actually agree with me that till now, till date, a lot of Nigerians are still suffering and a lot of them are yet to get back on their feet. Now, what strategies do you think the incoming administration can actually take to address, you know, poverty and also, you know, uh, make life a little bit better for the citizens? Yes, uh, no gain say that uh, Nigeria has been declared the headquarter of uh, poverty and a serious government should do everything possible to change this narrative. Because, uh, yes, if the, the outgoing president said they have done a lot and there are still things, yes, no, no development comes without a sacrifice, both from the leadership and the followership. Yes, there has to be sacrifice, but we are saying for there to, for there to be a kind of uh, alleviation of this poverty, government should, the incoming government should do something very drastic in terms of social investment for instance social investment policy that will really impact impact on the life of these poor masses because any policy that will not impact on the poor masses will be a kind of elitist policy so what do i mean by elitist policy policy that will only favor the rich and the privileged class so we are looking at this incoming government we want them to look at the the plight of the poor people by by investing so much in st skills acquisition for instance is a way of um, alleviating poverty, give equal opportunities to younger people who are leaving the country in droves, let, let them find something to, 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 to do, let, engage them. If you engage them by so doing, you are reducing poverty. And before you can do that, you have to put a very crucial infrastructure in place, you fix the light, and for, for record, the Ajakuta that has been abandoned for so long is a very good and critical project that can turn the life of Nigerians around. If that can be sought, I'm very sure small-scale industry will grow and um, a, lo a lot of support in that regard will be achieved. All so right. we are looking at social I'd investment I'd like you policy. to hold your thoughts on that. Uh, we have on the screen the arrival of the Vice President who has just taken um, a guard of salute from the armed forces. Uh, apparently, uh, the last time uh, before he bows out 
of that noble office is um, uh, just to use this opportunity to pay some respect. One of the finest gentlemen we have had occupied that position, if you like, uh, who has brought a mastery of uh, his teaching profession, the law uh, profession, in the guidance of his public conduct and, uh, and activity. And I, I dare say that um, if uh, today was to have taken a different turn, perhaps, <laughs> who knows, it would have been, been uh, <laughs> the president would be so But either way, I mean, I think Nigeria was blessed to have a vice president in the frame of your Shibaja, uh, Mr. Baba. Yes, indeed. Um, and that also, I, will, I, will, I can't help but also still key it back to the incoming president's ability to spot talent. Yeah. Don't forget he's a political protege yeah. of Ashwa Ajibola, Abetibu, amongst others. In this cabinet or this administration, you have about uh, four to five super ministers that, were, that are political proteges of Ashwa Ajibola Ahmed Tinubu. And that speaks volume on the quality of leadership of Ashwa Ajibola Ahmed Tinubu, empowering people, giving people opportunity. In Yomi Ishibaju, he has demonstrated that we have one of the best you know, vice presidents in the history of Nigeria. Personally, he has made me proud, and I'm sure he has made Nigerians proud. Somehow it, it, it does appear that if you look at our history, we have, we have a history of um, churning out very qualitative vice president from the days of Alessi Kwebe. Mm -hmm. uh, it does appear that uh, they come in firebrand, um, top of the range uh, quality, when, when, if there is any such thing to describe uh, Nigerians. And Ovi Ochimbeja, no doubt, has lived up to that. But also, uh, you can be said of uh, the incoming vice president is, I mean, a number of persons who spoke at the state banquet attest to his uh, political sagacity and his um, intellectual uh, capabilities. Uh, I, I hope and um, uh, I hope that he lives up to the bidding as we saw when he was governor of Borno State. Uh, it appears clearly that uh, we are reaching that crescendo. We see a number of top dignitaries lined up, um, obviously waiting to receive the president one last time as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria because he, before he walks into that state bus because clearly once he walks into that state bus, the next time he will be stepping out, he will be doing so just um, just as the former Firstly. president. Uh, I, I was thinking she would arrive with her husband, <laughs> but it appears. Uh, but it's, a, it's an indication that the big masquerade is about to appear. It's yeah. about to appear, yeah. clearly. It's probably just a few steps behind And uh, I think they are all preparing all of them for some kind of guard of honor. We see the service chiefs all lined up. Yes. Uh, we see the secretary to the government of the federation. We see the DG of the NIA. Uh, the Nigerian president seemed to join that lineup too. He, I think, jokefully, uh, himself and the Beninua president have a way of saying, of describing themselves as the 38 or 39 states <laughs> of Nigeria. <laughs> of Nigeria. Uh, we see Fabik Bajabia Miller, who, uh, it turns out, is a very close ally of this president. And we have seen him at very close range with the president at very, very critical states uh, function. We see a number of uh, senators, including the Senate president, uh, who is still Senate president until June 13th, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, we also see the new Ribadu. We understand a very close, uh, if there's any word, kitchen cabinet member mm -hmm. of the current president. We, we also see Boss Mustafa around and about, up and doing, uh, trying to get things uh, settled. That is the Imo state governor arriving with his beautiful uh, beautiful wife, Adon, in his uh, red cap, uh, there, uh, trying to get into the state house. I, I, I can imagine that today it will be a beehive of activity, a very serious one for the security chiefs to try to manage. So much, uh, so much expectations and so much, uh, so much um, regards for what Nigeria does on the continent. I think somewhere we saw the Rwandan president in the state box, among other state presidents that have arrived for this. Uh, occasion, and uh, we see also the chief of staff to the president, uh, the noble mm. professor mm. Gambari, who has seen it all, served at the world stage, and back <laughs> home again to give, uh, to give his best. Um, so, coming back to you, yes. how do you think we should also proceed? One other critical area we seem not to have done so much within the last eight years is our foreign relation. Although the president traveled for quite a number of times. But um, even from a layman, you will see that this country was no longer attracting the kind of people you used to attract. I mean, you can count at the back of your finger 
how many A-rated country presidents even visited this country in the last eight years? Some of them will come close to our neighbors. I don't want to call them for uh, the risks of being uh, considered derogatory. But we have seen leaders, great world leaders, undertake a tour of Africa, three, four nations, and they don't even stop here. The best we have attracted is their Secretary of State, uh, Secretary of uh, Foreign Relations, which sort of speak to our relevance. Our, uh, Baba talked about how we seem to have dropped the ball when it comes to leadership and direction uh, on, on, on the continent. In fact, Obasanjo mentioned at one occasion that a sitting African president told him that we are not providing the kind of leadership that Africa looks up to. Bola Tinibu, like he said, has the sagacity, has the exposure, has the international goodwill and network. Isn't it about time we begin to take on that leadership role? And I say this because, I mean, the chief of defense staff was saying the other day, we spent over seven or 17 trillion, I mean 17 billion dollars in the war in Syria alone alone. Today, what can we say is the benefit of that war? I'm not sure they are buying petroleum from us as a way of maybe a patronage you have gained as, 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 as a payback for the sacrifice or what have you. How do we begin to take our pride of place and then maximize that, that influence? that naturally uh, God has bestowed on us as a nation. Uh, thank you. Uh, b before now, Nigeria used to be described as uh, a country who is uh, beautiful abroad, ugly at home, mm. because of our extravagant spending and generosity towards these African countries. You cannot take that fact away that, yes, Nigeria provides leadership in Africa. But beyond that, in international relations now, countries are beginning to question our electoral process, the type of election we conduct, the corruption index and the rest and the type of uh, behavior toward this democracy and some people are withdrawing their support for nigeria for instance if you are going for a u.n general assembly meeting and you go with more than two three hundred uh, entourage it doesn't portray us uh, well in the international community and you are asking for debt forgiveness debt relief and Serious countries are no more than 5, 10, 20. Mm -hmm. They will just laugh, us, laugh at us that people, these people are not serious. So going beyond that, the, the, the electoral process really has to you know, be, be reformed that will show that, yes, this process is clean. If we get it right from that angle. Then uh, coming to this um, governor elect now, you know, who have the, the way with that, the class, the connections. President elect, who has the where with that, who has the connection in Africa, and has been interacting with some incumbent president across Africa. So I think we can we can change the ties. All right. Uh, I wish we had more time to continue to explore. There's so much to talk about Nigeria. We can't exhaust that in a two-hour studio time. I, I bet you. I want to thank you very much, uh, Dr. B uh, Baba Yusuf. Of course, I called him. Uh, uh, I mean, he came in dressed like in the royal robes of uh, the Yoruba <laughs> nation today. Um, and uh, I want to thank you very much for always showing up, for always providing those deep, insightful uh, perspective on thank issues you. as it borders on our unity. And doctor, thank you very much for coming.